welcome back. I have to say I'm totally astonished by the amount of people reaching out, asking questions, wanting to see more um, and interacting. That is much more than, than I expected, to be honest, uh, but it's exciting and I'm really motivated to just do the next one. So uh, last time we uh, talked about Blender and export and import to the engine, enable control rig and it's the very, very first uh, control. So what I would like to do this time is uh, talk about basic eye key for the hand. So let, let's do this hands and let's do maybe also a little bit rotation for the hands. In addition, uh, I will show you how you can visually debug um, some of the values you are dealing with. So uh, yeah, with uh, no further ado, uh, let's jump into the engine and uh, just start uh, where we stopped last time. So here we are. I haven't changed much. I only moved the rig out of a folder so to have it uh, in parallel to the uh, to the mesh and the skeleton itself. Um, so j just open it up, and then then we are here again in our editor. Here is our hierarchy again. Here is what we have done, which is only one node so far and one control. So as I said, what I would like to do is doing the hand eye key for at least one hand. Um, so let's start with generating the control. So I could go here and say new control, but instead I will uh, create a space. Uh, I can add new spaces to a control. They so live in the space then, um, and that will give us some really cool advantages. I will, maybe I will do an extra episode only about, about that. So let's make a space. Let's call that hand, hand space uh, L. So this is for our left hand. Um, and now if you select that, uh, there is no gizmo showing up that you can move it um, uh, in comparison with the controls. So you have to go right click and say control space transform and, and, and then it shows up. Um, and now let's uh, let's move it somewhere in the vicinity of uh, of the of the wrist. So let's see, it's a little bit too high. So let's go there. Let's go back a bit, yeah, like that. And then right click and say set initial transform from closest bone. And now it looks like nothing happened. This is one of the quirks you will find out uh, with experimental features sometimes. So actually it moved, uh, just like let's uh, reselect it, say um, um, let's do control again. And then you can see it snapped to the position. It's just not updated properly. So now we have a space here. We cannot do much with a space. It's just there and has a location. Uh, so what we want to do now is I do right click here while selecting and space and then do new and do a new control. So now it's generating a new control in the hand space. So the control itself, as you can see on the upper right, is a zero, zero, zero. So it's it's just uh, there as no, no, um, uh, no transform so far, so no offset uh, to the space itself. So we keep it there, that's where, where we want it. And then uh, let's first give it a nice uh, gizmo. Uh, so for the gizmo, let's check pyramid thick, for example, and then when we zoom out, we can see, oh, this is a nice pyramid. It's just a little bit too big. So let's uh, change it in the way we want it. First, we can rotate it around Z, 180 degree, and then uh, we have to scale it down. So I think it's by factor 10 or something like that, too big. So that should be nice. So now, now we have it here, and then as you can see, the pivot of of this gizmo is um, is here, and we want to have it there. So we have to move it a little bit, like forward, like three or something should be should be nice. So now, now we have uh, we have our gizmo in place, uh, which we want to use for the uh, basic I key. Uh, so next, let's talk about the solver we need. So uh, when I do right click and I go to hierarchy, you find a lot of them and there is basic I key. So let's use this one. Um, and then we have to tell it where it starts. So we, we have to say, okay, this is one bone, that's a second bone. And that's as far as I understand, the effector bone. And then we need to control that's controlling. So we go from upper arm left, that's how I called it, to lower arm uh, left. And then it is the wrist on the right, left side. So what's happening now is uh, now he's falling apart. He's trying to grab beneath us, beneath himself, because we give him the position of zero, zero, zero. Um, so he tries to reach that. 
and we also don't propagate to children so when i check that then also his hand is, uh, is down there um so now we have to give him a proper position so oh i forgot to rename that so this is actually i key hand left um and then i get the control and if I move the control into the effector, what happens is uh, it snaps now to the position I'm giving it. Uh, the elbow is a little bit strange, but we'll come to that in a second. So right now I already have him like this. So this is the first time I, I love Ike stuff, especially for hands and feet, uh, because this is a time where you really begin to get a feeling for the character so you can move the arms. Everybody is each time I see someone working on this, it's wiggling around on uh, on an eye key to, to see that. So let's fix the elbow. Um, so what I could do or what I saw um, in a lot of tutorials and in a lot of books and people mentioning that, uh, what the normal way seems to be is to make a new control for the elbow because as an animator, you normally you control the hand and then you control uh, how the elbow should be rotated. I'm a little bit lazy and actually my, my rig doesn't need so much control about the elbow. Uh, so it's for me okay to maybe uh, um, calculate the position of this elbow depending on the values I'm already having. So if I expand here, I have a rotation translation scale and I can use the position of this uh, I key as well as a pole vector. So pole vector is what it's called uh, where uh, where I control the elbow with. Um, so I can take this, I can add a vector to it and then I can feed it into the pole vector. So now something strange will happen and we rotate the arm because um, this, uh, 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 this location here is actually the same as where the I key is, so it's there. Um, so to better work with this, uh, there's some really nice thing in Control Rig which is called Visual Debug. So you can click on a pin with a right uh, click and then there is Add Visual Debug. So when I do this, there is this little bug popping up and here's some stuff I can set up. And maybe you can see it. Uh, here is now a square, red square. Uh, let's make it a different color, so maybe like, like really green. So you can see that there. As we don't add any offset, uh, it's still on the same position, but in the moment I do something like like this. Oh, no, it jumped out. Maybe it's a little bit too much. Here you can see it. So now I can even visualize the position um, uh, of this pole uh, vector I'm giving in. So this elbow tries to reach this point. That's what I understood. So um, we have to go maybe minus uh, like that. So now we have. Uh, we have the pole vector here, and as it is an offset of the I key, it moves with the arm. So as long as I don't do something like, ah, oh, it's really hard to make him flip here. He flips. So there might be position where he, where he like here, where where it's hard for him to figure out which side it is. Um, but I could even correct that, and um, maybe we we move it out even a little bit more like like 15 or something like that or we we do 10 but we only do minus three so um, yeah you can play around with this and what's nice now you you understand uh, what's happening there so you can make a right click and you can toggle it or you can completely remove it so for now I I remove it again so and this is actually already uh, pretty neat. So now we have uh, okay. So you see here, this is not this is not the best. This is really not the best position. So let's get that in again. Let's test a little bit and see that we don't have this situation. Um, so maybe we have to move it out uh, much more and maybe like like this. So yeah, that looks already much better. So that's what I said. You can you can you can test this, and I could have made a new control if I want to control this arm, or I want to give the animator the possibility to control this arm. I would maybe make a own control, and and that's when the space comes handy because I could make it in the same space. So when I move the space around, um, the rest of the stuff will will follow with a given offset. So yeah, that's that's the basic I key. So the next thing I could do is when I now go to rotation, I have already done what I for this rig would like to do. I don't use the rotation for the basic I key, but uh, it is distributed to the children. So what's happening here is I can now already control uh, my my hand. 
and um, with rotation and with translation I, I, ca I can make my arm move around so this is pretty pretty nice um, so yeah that's basically what I uh, wanted to show and um, yeah so so that 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 was basically the, the visual debug as a basic i key uh i decided to have this like really short ones with only one topic um and try to do them as fast as i can so they are later easier to find or if you only want to see one one part so next time i would like to take a look at the legs so then we test fabric um i key and ccd i key solvers uh, and check which one is better for for, uh, for the lag. Um, yeah, so hope to see you soon uh, again. Um, I'm really happy with all the followers, subscribers, and and all that. Uh, keep keep doing this. It's it's really nice. I'm getting a feeling for what you want to see, and then then we fo focus on that. So uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks.